And as always, brothers and sisters, we are open with the reading of the law, Exodus 20, 1 through 17. And when you get it, brother, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is, in the, that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercies unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it Thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that, with, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear a false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. And when you get it, brother, go ahead and read it. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, in Revelation 22, 14, and 15. Revelations 22, 14, and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in th through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Okay, brothers and sisters, we always start with the reading of the law to remind ourselves and, and everyone else that the law is still good, and we have to obey them. They have not been nailed to the cross. And I'd like to say good afternoon, brothers and sisters. And as always, we give thanks and honor and glory and praise to the Lord, our Savior Jesus Christ, just for waking us up today, because he didn't have to do that. Amen. Oh and giving us another chance to worship him on his Sabbath day. And it's always an honor and a privilege for me to stand before you all on this day so we can edify each other in the word of God so we can learn what it is the Lord wants us to do and do it. You know, the last time I was here, I was teaching. A sister come up to me, and she asked me, she said, what camp are you with? I said, well, I'm... I'm from the Memphis camp. You are. So that tells me I haven't been making enough presents around here, so I got to make myself known again. But brothers and sisters, we all know when Jesus was here on this earth, he did not have a lot of worldly possession. He did not possess a lot. But still, the status quo, the people that wanted, that, that thought they was in some type of position, they wanted to shut him down. You got to ask yourself, why? And the same thing is going on today. Israel, we don't have anything. We don't have, we, we, we're in no position to deny anybody anything. But still, we're the ones the world wants to shut down. We're the ones they want to keep their foot on our necks. And that's because we possess something that's more precious, more valuable than 
worldly possession. And that's that word of God. That's that word of God. And that's what we have. And the Lord gave us that so that we could have something. We, we use that word of God to give us patience. When we're going through things, it gives us comfort. And when someone rail against us, we can use that word of God to defend ourselves. That's why the lesson today, brother and sister, is no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. He's not talking about the carnal weapon, these worldly weapons. Because the battle, the war that we'll fight, that we're fighting, is not flesh, it's spiritual. So when he say no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. We're going to see exactly what that means today. Let's, let's go ahead and get started. Let's start this in Isaiah, the 54th chapter. Isaiah 54, and we're going to pick it up at 13. Isaiah 54, we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 54 and 13. And go ahead, brother. And all the children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. And he say, all the children shall be taught of the Lord and great. Great shall be the peace of thy children. All the children. You tell me all we have to do for our children to have peace is to teach them about the Lord. And the world, the world spent all these millions of dollars, all these experts doing research on why our children are killing themselves, why our children are in the condition that they're in. And all we have to do is just teach them of the Lord. They can save all that money. But that's the problem with the world today. They're not teaching the Lord. They're taking church out of the schools. Right now, they're talking about, in the Supreme Court, separation of church and state. But the state is all in the religious business, telling them what they can do, what they can't do, what's right, what's wrong. But he said, all we have to do is teach our children of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of our children. But go ahead, brother. In righteousness shalt thou be established. In righteousness shall they be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear from the terror, for it shall not come near thee. You say, thou shalt not fear for the terror, it shall not come near thee. Now, uh, Isaiah talking about the wilderness now, but the Lord, the same thing is happening now. The Lord can protect us now. Keep us safe. Keep us from being afraid. But go ahead. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. He said, whoever shall gather against thee shall fall for thy sake. If you're walking in this truth and doing what thus saith the Lord, that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean nobody's going to come against you. You're not going to go through stuff. But you know that the Lord has you, and the Lord has given you something to protect yourself. Go ahead. Behold, I have created the smell that blow of the coals and the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the, the waster to destroy. The Lord said, I created all this. He said, I created all this. I did it. Go ahead, brother. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. He said, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Because the Lord said, I created it all. If you don't, if, and if, he, if the Lord is on your side, if you're sticking with the Lord, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. But let's see what he's talking about. Go ahead. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. And every tongue that rise against thee in judgment, thee shall condemn. So when people are talking about you, backbiting, don't get upset. Don't worry about it. The Lord will take care of it. And he has given you a weapon that will allow you to shut it down if used properly. Go ahead, brother. This is the heritage of the servants of God, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And this is the inheritance of this weapon that the Lord has forged and given us is the saints' inheritance. And his weapon, the spirit of truth, is no other than that word of God. But let's go a little farther, brothers and sisters. Let's go to James, the, the third chapter. Now he said, 
he said that uh, every tongue that rises against thee shall be condemned. James 3, and we're going to pick it up at 1. James 3, we're going to pick it up at 1. James 3, we're going to pick it up at 1. Go ahead, brother. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. He said, be not many masters. Don't, don't rush to be in charge. Don't rush to be the head. Because they say heavy is the head that wears the crown. That's a lot of responsibility. And you got the, and those that's in charge, they got the greatest condemnation because they're responsible for everybody else. So they really got to tread lightly. He said, Brother McKinnon, you should be over the class. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> you must, don't put that on me. Hey, when the Lord ready for me to step up, the Lord will do it. But I know how I am right now. You don't want me over it. Not there yet. But uh, go ahead, brother. For many things we offend all. He said, many things we offend, we offend. Now, we're we, we going to offend somebody, our actions, the way. They... Brothers and sisters, I've learned that just by trying to do what thus said the Lord, walking in this truth, just trying to keep the dietary law, you offend people. But he's saying many things we offend. I'll go ahead. If any man offend not in the word, the same is a perfect man. Well, you don't offend in the word with your mouth. You're a perfect man. Go ahead. And, and able also to bridle the whole body. And able to bridle the whole body. If you can hold that tongue, because that tongue gets a lot of people in trouble. <laughs> it's hard to control that tongue. I, I, just, I, just, I shouldn't say, I just got to say something. And next thing you know, you in trouble with the Lord. Now, you women know how to, your, 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 your husband tell you, look, I'm tired of arguing. Don't say another word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you hear me? I'm through with it. Don't say nothing. I bet you are. Just can't hold that tongue. That tongue is dangerous. Go ahead, brother. Three, behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. They, even the horse, they had that bit in their mouth. They turn left, the horse go left. They pull right, the horse. They control the horse's whole body just with that little bit in their mouth. Go ahead. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small ham. On, the, on those ships, those big old ships, that ham, that's a little old steering wheel up there, and they, they control that whole ship, whole ship. Go ahead, brother. Whether so ever, the governor listeneth. Go ahead. Even so the tongue is a little member in both of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. In that tongue, a little member, small, but both great things, and kindleth. Uh, uh, that tongue can cause wars. It's a little memo, but it boasts great things. When I was in the military, I was telling somebody I had this sergeant. He's about 4'6". Talk big trash. When I first went to the unit, I heard him talking. He's just boasting. There ain't nobody touch a picture of me. I'm there just, I walked, I'm, I'm expecting to see somebody 6'4 instead of 4'6". I thought, man, much trash as you talk. You ought to be a lot taller than that. Just selling wolf tickets. As soon as you jump up, stop playing, stop playing. <laughs> well, get the, get the jaw jerking and that tongue get the going. Go ahead, brother. This it's causes a kindle of great fire. Go ahead. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That it defileth the whole body and set up on fire the course of nature. He said that tongue is vicious. And think about it, brothers and sisters, when somebody come after you, even with Jesus, first they come after you with their words. They try to verbally assault you. Try to tear you down. You ain't nothing. You ain't never been nothing. 
I don't even see why you come outside. You can't buy nothing. You shouldn't even be around nobody. Just try to tear you down. Verbally, that's what they try to do. Why are you trying to keep the, you, you know you ain't going to keep walking in that, you know you ain't going to keep walking in the truth. You might well just come on out now. You even see it in the media. When, uh, the, when something happened in a, a, a police shoot, an unarmed black person, what's the first thing you see on the media? They start assassinating that person's character. Well, you know, he was arrested when he was six years old for stealing a bubble gum, so, you know, he wasn't no righteous person. But they assault you with that tongue. That's what they come after you with first. But go ahead, brother. And it's set on fire of hell for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. See, every animal, no matter how big or small, mankind has tamed and made a pet out of them. Go ahead. But the tongue can no man tame. Is it, it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. That tongue. That tongue. But that word of God is supposed to teach you discretion, patience, discretion. And you're supposed to be able to control or limit that tongue. Go ahead. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And, there, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. He said, with that same tongue, that same mouth, you bless God and curse man. Go ahead. <clears throat> Out of the same mouth proceed of blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. He said, that same mouth, that little tongue, come blessings and curses. You see somebody, you walk up to them, hey, brother, how you doing? May the Lord bless you. As soon as you walk away, oh, he going straight to hell. Out of the same mouth. He said, I'll not be so. If you're a servant of the Lord, you say you're a Christian, it ought not be so. But let's go look for let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. <clears throat> Back up to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. I'm going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to see. This weapon. 2 Corinthians 10 and 1. See what this weapon the Lord has given us is capable of. 10 and 1. Go ahead, brother. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who is the presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. He said, I beseech you in meekness and gentleness. That's what we have to do, brothers and sisters. Even somebody coming against us, we still try to try to remain humble. Because that, that, that meekness, that gentleness can extinguish a lot of fires. Folks come to you, they all mad and mean. They expecting you to blow up at them. Then they see you being humble then it might change their whole, out, their whole outlook, their whole perspective, their whole attitude. But go ahead, brother. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with the confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. He said, we walk according to the flesh, but we know we're not walking according to the flesh. He said, I beseech you that I might not be bold when I'm present with you, with his confidence, because Paul said he was confident in his word of God, in his weapon he had. But he still remained meek. Go ahead. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Oh, and this is a war system, brothers. This is a war because we are fighting for our salvation. He said, but though we walk in the flesh, because we are in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We war after something much, much greater. Go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's that weapon that the Lord gave, gave us. He said that this weapon is, is, is not carnal, 
Because if, if this war is not carnal, then you need a weapon that can match that. A Uzi, a, a, a nine ain't going to do nothing against a spiritual war, in a spiritual war. You need something comparable to your enemy that you can come against. He said the weapon is not carnal. He said casting down imagination of every high thing, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring down strongholds. And those strongholds, it's that false doctrine that they teach. This weapon the Lord gave us, and you got to be careful because it's a double-edged sword. You got to learn how to use it. Because you end up cutting your own head off. But it bring down strongholds, this false doctrine. We're going to show you nothing can stand up against it. Nothing. Go ahead, brother. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when our obedience is fulfilled. When we are doing what we're supposed to do. When we're walking in this truth the best that we can. When we wake up, when we're giving, Lord, when, we, when, we, when we're giving God the glory. Giving him the praise. But this weapon that, we, that we, the Lord has given us. And just like any war, with any war, if, you, if you're going to war, you get a weapon, you got to train with it. You got to learn how to use it. You got to come good with it. You know, you, they're not going to send you to war, just put a weapon in your hand and send you out there. The same thing with this weapon that the Lord has given us. You got to practice. And how you practice with it? By reading, by studying it. Coming good, we're becoming a master at this thing. But where are we, brother? We finished at six. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. He said, This weapon takes down everything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And what exalts itself above the knowledge of God? Anything or anybody that tried to interpret the word of God or correct the word of God? Oh, the Lord don't mean that. You know, when, when you tell them, the Lord say the Sabbath day is Saturday. Oh, that, 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 he didn't mean that. That was back then. He changed it. That's, that's trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. You, know, you could just do whatever you want to do. The Lord understand. That's exalting yourself above the knowledge of God. But that is not what the Lord said. But Hebrew 4, and we're going to pick it up at 12. Hebrew 4, we're going to pick, pick it up at 12. 4 and 12. Go ahead, brother. For the word of God is quick and powerful. It's quick and powerful. This word of God, this sword of the Spirit, this Lord has given us this weapon. It's, it's swift and powerful. Go ahead. And sharper <clears throat> than any two-edged sword. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. That's why I said you got to be careful with it. You're swinging it. You know, cutting yourself. You got to practice. Make sure you know what you're doing. It's not for a, a, a rookie, for a novice. You got to become a pro with it. Go ahead, brother. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. Oh, divide even the soul and the spirit. It cuts deep. It cuts to the heart. We all have been sitting up in the class before and the brothers teaching. Like they talking right to you. You be looking around. That brother been following me this week or something. <laughs> but that was that word of God. That was that sword. It cut straight through. Go ahead. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It get to people. Now you just be talking about scripture and somebody get mad and upset. Say, why are you upset? Are you talking about me? I'm talking, I'm, I'm just... Reading scriptures. Brother, what you talking about? Well, I know you're talking about me. Because it's, it's the uh, discerner of the intents of the heart. Your thoughts and intents of the heart. It, 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 it's revealing what they're really, what's really on their mind. What's really in their heart. And that's what that word of God would do for you. That's what it'll do. But let's go a little farther. Let's, let's look at the inheritance of the saints. Let's go to Psalms 149. Psalms 149, we're going to pick it up at 1. Psalms 
But people try to exalt themselves above God. They, they come up with all kinds of excuses. Well, you know, the Bible was written by man. Or, you know, King James was a sodomite. They let you know they haven't been reading because they, they caught up on the messenger and not the message. It doesn't matter who bringing the truth as long as they bring in the truth. If you're starving to death and somebody bring you some food, you're not you're gonna say, well, who cooked this? Who get who brought this? <laughs> you're gonna be ready to eat. Psalms 159, we're gonna pick it up at one. Go ahead, brother. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the saints. The Lord loves singing and praising. He loves singing and praising and rejoicing. He enjoys that. And we can see why them choir be getting with that choir get to going. Get you moving. Now, I'm not gonna dance today. <laughs> But he loves that. He, he loves it. And I'm talking about real singing and praising the Lord. I'm not talking about some of them church that be talking, they stepping on the devil's head. <laughs> so some of the time I say, what y'all be doing that? What's that? Well, we stumping on Satan's head. Like, well, a lot of y'all in there need to put y'all head down there and get stumped on too. But go ahead, brother. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Be joyful in our king. Go ahead. Let them praise his name in, in the dance. And let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. He said, let them praise his name with dance and sing praises to him with, with, with instruments, with musical instruments. The Lord loves that. There's nothing wrong with it. Go ahead. For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. He will beautify the meek with salvation. That's what we want. We want that salvation. So we got to be meek and humble. Tell people all the time, especially people with a hot head. Tell them all the time, you got to think, consider. If any of you call yourself a servant of the Lord. So you can't be a hammer all the time. Because to a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and all it know to do is bang. So anytime anything come up, first thing they're going to do, blow out. Blow out. They're going to go to bang and go to beat. I said, that's counterproductive. And the word of God should teach you some patience. Brother Boy said, you, Brother Boy said, well, he said, you'll be surprised at the number of people that have come against him in the class. False accusations. Just come. He said, but he has to endure it. He can't just blow up just because somebody come against him. But uh, go ahead, brother. Where are we? Five. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Go ahead. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And the two-edged sword in their hand. Oh, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and that two-edged sword in their hand. Go ahead. Execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Now, in, 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 in the uh, thousand, thousand year millennium field with no saints ruling, they're going to actually be able to do this. But now, we execute judgment and vengeance with this word of God. This is our, this is our weapon. Brother, that means you got your Bible with me. You know I don't leave home without that thing. I'm always packing. Red in case something jump off. That's how you got to be ready. Go ahead, brother. To bind their kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them the judgment written. The judgment that are written, go ahead. Dishonor all. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. That's the inheritance of the saints. The sword of the Spirit. This word of, and for us it's this word of God. That's what the Lord has given us to protect ourselves. But let's go to 2 Timothy 
the fourth chapter. And see what we have to do with this sword. Second Timothy four. Second Timothy four. I'm going to pick it up at one. Go ahead, brother. I charge thee there, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, whom shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and His kingdom. And people read that and go right over it. He says. It will judge the quick and the dead, the living and the dead, at his appearance and his kingdom. And they still turn right around and say, you're going to heaven. Or, or, you, or people are already in heaven, or people are already in, in hell, or in the lake of fire. So that means ju uh, uh, Jesus already came and set up his kingdom. But they read stuff, they, they, they just skim through it. But go ahead, brother. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. A preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Be ready. Be ready. If somebody wants this truth, be ready to give it to them. Be ready to, to, to tell, them, tell them what they're doing is wrong. And they, if they're trying to do right, be, be ready to tell them, no, brother, that's not what the Lord wants you to do. The Lord don't want you to celebrate his birthday on December 25th. He wants you to keep his high days. That's what he wants you to do. Really, what's, what's that? Then you break it down to him. You show him. Invite him to the class. That's how you do it. Go ahead, brother. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. He said reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If somebody is, is, is spreading that falsehood, if they come to you with that mess, don't be, rebuke them. But do it with long, with, with long suffering and most importantly with doctrine, with the word of God. Not with what you believe or what you think. It's not about what you believe or what you think, what somebody else believes. This female pastor told me one time I'm working with, we was... We was debating scriptures. Well, I was talking scriptures. She was talking traditions. And then she said, well, you know, I don't argue the Bible. And I said, well, I, and now I see why. I don't argue quantum physics because I know nothing about it. Well, you, you interpret the Bible the way you want to, and I'll interpret it the way I want to. I say, no, you interpret it the way you want to. I'm reading and doing exactly what it says. So it's not for no private interpretation. But you've got to be ready to rebuke and exhort. But we're long-suffering, because we were all in that position at one time. And somebody was patient enough with us until we got it. I know when I first come to the Israel of God, we was in the, uh, this sister house, Sister Applewhite. You all probably heard somebody uh, speak of her. Every Saturday, we in her house. First, we was on the telephone. Couldn't hear nothing. <laughs> Everybody, what, 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 what'd he say? Then boys start coming down. Every Sabbath, every other Saturday. And I'm sitting there. Boy, uh, uh. Raven, uh, Naphtali, all of them, they would come down. I'm sitting there. They talking all this stuff. I'm saying, them old nappy head folk don't know what they talking about. <laughs> My grandmama been reading the Bible out every morning. I, I never woke up in the morning. She, she never told me this mess. It can't be in the Bible. I'm going to go home. I'm going to find. I'm going to prove them wrong. Never could. <laughs> well, I'm going to go back the next week. Wait till next week. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to find something wrong, they say. That was over 30 years ago, still stuck here. <laughs> trying to find them wrong. 
But you got to be ready. Go ahead, brother. Three. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And that time is now. Go ahead. But after their own lusts shall they heat to themselves teachers having itching, itching ears. And that goes on now. People, they go from camp to camp. These different Hebrew camps. Or even the Sunday churches. They go to church finding somebody to teach them what they want to hear. Now they want to hear that, oh yeah, man, you can have many wives if you want. Or you can do whatever you want. The Lord understands. You can eat anything, just pray over. They want to hear that. So they go and they search and they find somebody that would teach them that. They search, they got itching ears. And they turn from the truth. And they they don't endure sound doctrine. No matter how you read, let them read it for themselves. And when, and when you let them read it for themselves, and they read it, and then they look at it, and they look to see what kind of Bible you got. And they say, well, my pastor said. So that's good. Then we'll tell your pastor, when he go to the lake of fire, save you a seat right next to him. But they go out searching for fables. But go ahead, brother. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And they shall turn unto fables. They tell me, ain't nobody turn to no fable when you're talking about the word of God. I said, you celebrate Christmas? Yeah, you celebrate Easter? Yeah. What's that got to do with it? That when Jesus was born, and that's his death and resurrection. I said, that's fable. And what Santa Claus and toys have to do with the birth of Jesus? And what an Easter bunny got to do with his death and resurrection. And rabbits don't lay eggs. So what the, what's the eggs got to do with it? Have you ever thought about that? Well, we do it for the children. So you teach your children that it's okay for a rabbit to go and rob these chickens for the eggs. Yeah, how was the chicken? Well, it's okay for the rabbit to be an egg thief, but you do it for the children. Well, go ahead, brother. Where are we? Five. Five. Go ahead. But well, watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. Watching all things. Endure affliction. Something, something going to come against us, brother and sister. As long as we're here in this flesh, in this carnal world, things going to come against us. But we got to watch. Be swift to hear, slow to speak. Listen, watch, and do affliction. Go ahead. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of the evangelist. Spread the gospel. Go ahead. Make full proof of thy ministry. Make full proof of your ministry. Sharpen that sword. Make sure what you're saying is what thus said the Lord. If you're going to put the Lord's name on it, make sure it's right. You know, not, not your own understanding. Well, let's go to, uh, let's back up to 2 Timothy 3rd chapter. 2 Timothy 3 and 10. See what Paul said here. Go ahead, brother. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, Faith, long suffering, charity, patience. Now, Paul tells you something. Today. Paul said, You've known my doctrine. You've known what I teach. My manner of life, my purpose, my faith, long suffering, my charity, my love, my patience. He said, You've known that. Go ahead. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. He said, you know of my affliction, what I went through. And Paul went through some stuff. But then he said, out of all I went through, the Lord delivered me out of all of them. And the Lord is not a respecter person. If he deliver one, he'll deliver all. So all you got to do is just keep going. A long time ago, sister come to me, Brother, I've been praying, I've been, I've been, I don't know. I don't think the Lord hears me. I've been asking the Lord to help me, to deliver me, but I don't think he hears me. I say, how long have you been praying? I've been praying for a long time. 
So you, have you been praying a thousand years? No, I ain't been praying that long. Well, it's still one day to the Lord. Say, the Lord will deliver you in his time. When he's ready. But we, and that's, that's, why, that's why the book I always tell about patience. We are so impatient. We want everything now. Right, we're a microwave generation now. We don't want to wait on nothing. But we have to, and the Lord, the Lord might see something you don't. The Lord know if he give you this, you might not be able to handle it. You know, oh, I be praying to the Lord, ooh, I hit the lottery. If I win that $300 million, I'm going to give it to the church. The Lord knows if you win that money, we'll never see you again. <laughs> And you'd be out there paving your way straight to the lake of fire. Just bawling. Yeah. Just raining, dollar bills, dollar bills. But the Lord delivers you in his time. He knows. He's not going to let you drown. But where are we, brother? Well. Go ahead. Yeah. All that, yeah, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So all that live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. So one thing, you know, if, if folks coming at you, if you're being attacked, you know, you must be doing something godly. That's some consolation in there. If you, if you, if you uh, uh, they start coming after you, then you know that you must be doing something right. Go ahead, brother. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But evil men and seducers, they shall get worse and worse. We see them. No matter what, they, they just never enough. They get worse and worse. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. But you continue the thing that you learned. You know it's been, it's been proven to be correct. You've read it for yourself. Continue those things. It's not, it's not for naught. It's not in vain. And the Lord will preserve you. Go ahead. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. He said, from a child you had known the holy scriptures. So, and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to bring our children, teach, start teaching them when they're young about the truth. About the truth so they will stay in it and don't depart from it. But go ahead. All scriptures is given by in, in, inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this sword is given by inspiration of God. Man did not forge this weapon. That's why it's perfect. That's why it can, it can cut through the bones and the marrow. Because God forged this. He forged this weapon. And it's given by, although the man, he had a man to write it, he inspired them. These are his words. The Lord did that. But uh, let's go to Jude, book to Jude. It's the little book right before Revelation. Oh, you read that 17? Go ahead, read that 17. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So once you learn how to use this weapon properly, you're ready. you strap, you set. For all good works. But Jude 1, the little book right before Revelation. Just got one chapter. So you use that weapon right, you set for all good works. Jude, we're going to pick it up at 1, 1 through 4. Go ahead, brother. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Oh, so the Father separates you or sanctify you, but Jesus preserves you. He the one that, he's the one that keeps you. He's the one that, that does that. And, and, and called, and the call are those with some for knowledge, those some understanding, those that know something, that know what's going to happen. Go ahead. 
Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Go ahead. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needed for me to write unto you, exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He said, I write to you of the common salvation. If it's common salvation, that means it's for everybody. Now, if you go to a place, if, there, if there's a, a common place, that means everybody can use that space. So it's common salvation. It's not just for Israel, as some, some people try to teach. It's common salvation. Anybody that, that take hold of this truth is entitled to it. But go ahead, brother. But he said he, he, he uh, exhorts you that you earnestly contend for the faith. That's another important thing he said. If you contend for the faith, you fight for it. Like in a boxing match, they contend for the belt. That means they fighting for it. Fighting earnestly for it. And that's what we have to do. Fight for our faith. That's why this is a war. We fight for it. Go ahead. For, for there are certain men crept in unawares, who's before of old ordained to the con condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, certain men crept in unaware. You didn't, you, couldn't notice, you didn't notice them. They sneaked in. They sneaked into this thing. Ungodly men turned the grace of God into lasciviousness or, or evil wickedness. Those are the ones that, that use the word of God as a cloak of maliciousness. They use the word of God for their benefit, for their gain. And in turn, denying the Lord. You know, you got to be careful. You got to be careful not to deny the Lord. Like, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't call on Jesus because that's not a Hebrew name. Uh, so, so the Lord don't know English? He gave the language, but he don't know it? He the one gave all the languages. He the one who separated everybody. But he can only speak to the Hebrews. But in turn, they denying, they denying the Lord. Let's go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Because if you go into war, you got to be strapped for it. Back up to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, we're going to pick it up at 10. 6 and 10. Go ahead, brother. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Stand firm in the Lord and in the power of his might because he gave us something real powerful. This sword of the spirit. But just because you got the baddest weapon on the playground don't mean you're supposed to bust everybody's head with it. That's why you got to learn how to use it. But go ahead. Put on the whole arm of God. And put on the whole arm of God. And like I said before, if you say, I don't argue the Bible, why you need his armor on? Why you need it on? Go ahead. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that's why this battle is not carnal. You're fighting against Satan. You're fighting against the wiles of the devil. But you got to put on the whole, the whole armor of God. Not just your boots and your helmet. You got to be fully strapped. Because anytime you go to war, you got to have the proper gear on. Go out there to war with your skinny jeans and your J's on, see what happens. We first man down, you and your skinny jeans. But go ahead, brother. Well, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's why we need this arm of God. That's why we need this spiritual weapon. Because we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, you might be facing this, this carnal person, this fleshly person. 
But that's not who you're battling against. You're battling against the, the, uh, uh, that evil spirit that's influencing them, that's encouraging them to attack you. I tell people all the time, so you need to look at the other side of that coin and make sure you're not the one Satan using to attack the servant of God. You got to make sure that you was on the right side. That's why I say because discretion and patience, this, this word of God will teach you. But we're battling against wickedness in high places, against Satan the devil. And think about this, brothers and sisters. Satan convinced a third of the angels. Now, these angels, they knew they were created by God. They'd been in his presence. They knew his power. And he convinced them to try to overthrow heaven, overthrow God. So what chance do we have against Satan? And he didn't do it with force. He did it with words. Even with Eve. He got Eve with words. I always say that tongue, wicked. That's why when people talk to you, listen real close. Listen real close. I was going to talk to a lady on the phone. She, was, she later called the office the other day. And she wasn't satisfied with the answer that I was giving her. And she said, well, you, and she kept trying to put words in my mouth. Well, you telling me that you, can, that you do not have what I'm at. Ma'am, I did not tell you that. I told you we, I have not found it yet. Well, that is unacceptable. You telling me you do not have, you did not keep a copy. Ma'am, I did not tell you that. Once again, I told you I do not, I have not been able to find it. I did not say we do not have it. Well, that, you, are, you are a professional officer, and it's just, honey, I just don't believe that you do not have it. I said, ma'am, obviously, you're not listening to me, and you done made up your mind. I said, I'm going to tell you one more time. I have not located it yet. When I find it, I will let you know. Click. You hung up on her. Uh, I sure did. We pay this phone bill. I don't have to sit there and take that. But you have to listen closely to people. Them words, words make sure you fully understand. But go ahead, brother, because we're we battling against evil wickedness in high places. Go ahead. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. He said, take the whole arm of God. Go ahead. And having done all to stand. And having have done all to stand. Make sure you've been practicing with that weapon. So when someone comes against you, you're ready for them. When somebody comes against you with the, that false doctrine, you're ready. You're ready. Uh, go ahead, brother. Stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with the truth. Having your loins girded, having you clothed with the truth. Go ahead. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And having on the breastplate, breastplate of righteousness. Go ahead. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And your feet, the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're standing firm. How do you prepare? By studying, by reading, showing yourself approved. But with the, with the gospel of the peace, the gospel of peace, that's, and that's that patience, that meekness that you're supposed to have. Go ahead, brother. Above all, taking the shield of faith. And above all, that shield of faith. Your faith. Make sure you have that with you. Go ahead. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. And you'll be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked. So when they be coming at you, and them fiery darts is that tongue lashing. Them, them hurtful words they try to throw at you. Try to belittle you. Make you think you're not worthy of anything. But every time they throw something, that, your, that shield of faith come up. Blocking all that stuff so it don't get to you. It don't bring you down. Because you know that the Lord, that you're preserved in Christ Jesus. That's why you got to stay, with, stay, on, stay on this thing. Be, be alert. Go ahead, brother. And take the helmet of salvation. And the helmet of salvation. Always keep it on your mind. I'm fighting for my salvation. 
I'm fighting for my salvation. I don't care what they say, say about me or to me. I'm fighting for my salvation. It's greater than that. It's greater than that. I'm not uh, uh, trying to get nothing in this carnal world. I'm looking for a better country, a country that's not uh, by man but by God. Go ahead. Keeping that on your mind. Go ahead. And the sword of the Spirit. And the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. Which is the Word of God. That weapon that the Lord gave you that, that protects you, that prevent any other weapon formed against you from prospering. You got that Word, that Word protecting you. Go ahead, brother. Praying always with all the prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And praying always, always, and watching with the persevering and supplication or the begging of the saints. Always praying. Praying to the Lord. Asking Him for strength. Asking Him for guidance. And reading this book, asking Him for some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding.